continue in this lecture about the for loop so looping is done basically when we want to repeat a certain section of a block of a code so what we wrote we will take some examples to illustrate the for loops so let's say i write for x is equal to 0 x is less than equal to 9 and x is equal to x plus 1 and then i can do that print f and percentage d comma x so what will happen now is that it will print out the numbers from 0 1 2 3 till 9 so this will be the output now other way so till now we have uh, seen the increment but let's see how, what happens we can even decrement so i can write for x is equal to 9 x is greater than equal to 0 and then x is equal to x minus 1 or in fact this statement can be written as different types i can write x minus minus or minus minus x so all three are fine and then i can write that okay printf percentage d and then something like i have to write 9 minus x if i want to print from 0 so it will be 0 to 9 so this is the case for decrement and other things what we can do is now let's see the comparison between for loop while loop and do while loop so what i will do is let's see the for loop so for n is equal to 1 n is less than equal to 10 n plus plus so this is some code and let's see now what will be the equivalent code for The while loop so I will write n is equal to 1 and while n is less than equal to 10 and then I have to do n plus plus some code here so this is the way for while loop and then let's look at the do while loop so what will happen n is equal to 1 so do and then n is equal to n plus 1 something some code here and then while n is less than equal to 10 so this is for the do while loop so this is the comparison between for loop how to write it in the while loop and then how to write it in a do while loop so now we will look at some additional features some additional features of for loop so what are they so first additional feature that we will look at is so we can have even two variables in the initialization part so let's say we have p is equal to 1 then we can write for n is equal to 0 n is less than 17 n plus plus so this can be written as instead of initializing p here i can write p is equal to 1 then a comma n is equal to 0 n is less than 17 n plus plus so this initialization we can have any number of variables here only thing is that you have to separate them with a comma instead of a semicolon so we can write something like and even the thing is so 
what we can do is that we can write something like for n is equal to 1 m is equal to 50 this is the initialization the two variables are there now n is less than equal to m and then n is equal to n plus 1 comma m is equal to m minus 1 so this is again a for loop so what happens here is n is equal to 1 and n is equal to 1 it is initialized m is equal to 50 and then what it does is while n is less than m so we do n is increasing and m is in fact decreasing so what happens here is so n will be increasing every time so it is 1 2 3 4 5 it will go on till 50 if there was no condition or uh, like till 50 n is less than equal to m so m is 50 so if when n become n is 1 initially so let's see the values n so n and m let us consider so let's see n is equal to 1 m is equal to 50 so it will be incremented so this becomes 2 this becomes 49 next so this is n is incremented m is decremented again till this n is less than equal to m it becomes 3 this becomes 48 and it goes and then this becomes 25 so let's say it becomes 24 so this will become now so this will become 26 when this becomes 25 so this becomes 25 now n is less than equal to m is still satisfied but now after this one what will happen is that n becomes 26 and m becomes 24 so now n is not less than equal to m so it will nothing will be done so this loop will run 25 times and we saw that there are two initializations of two variable one checking and there are two one increment so this is increment and this is decrement and here these are separated by commas so now let's look at another some other variants also so we can have let's say m is equal to 5 i can say for I have no initialization here m is not equal to 100 and then there is no increment or decrement looking at some of the variants so it was for m is equal to 5 then it is initialized here so I don't require to initialize I will just put a semicolon nothing here m is not equal to 100 this is the condition that is checked and then there is no increment decrement and then what we do is in the body so I write printf percentage d and then I write m and then I write m is equal to m plus 5 so this means so the initialization part is done separately beforehand so this is initialization and this is the increment and only in the for loop so in this these brackets only the condition is being checked and that is also fine and something more is we can write for loop without any body so j is equal to 1000 j is greater than 0 j minus minus and then i can just put a semicolon so this is some kind of like it is not doing anything but it will be looping for 1000 times so this is kind of waiting for something for that i can put a loop here with some big numbers so now we will look at something called nested loops 
so we can have for i is equal to 1 i is less than 10 i plus plus and then we have one for loop i can write another for loop here so let's write with for j is equal to 1 j is less than 20 j plus plus and we write something here so what happens is now this for loop runs 10 times and this for loop runs 20 times so overall because this for loop runs 20 times each time this body is body 2 and this complete thing is body 1 so we know that okay body 1 will run 10 times and body 2 will run 20 times each time and into 10 so total it will be running 200 times so this is the nested for loop then last thing that we will study in this looping is jumps in loop so what happens if I want to go out of the loop so we will have something like jumping out of the loop and then leaving remaining part of loop so these two things are there and for this we use break and for this we use continue so we will look at these in the next chapter